Welcome to Game Savers Podcast, your next-gen gaming podcast for news, reviews, previews, impressions, analyses, and roundtable discussions involving past, present, and future games, and retro analyses, because that's what we're here to do today. We're joined by Brother Wayne, Brother Alex, both in the house. What's up, guys? <laughs> How's it going? So they're both here. We're going to talk about Borderlands 2. We're going to rewind it back to 2012. This puppy came out on September 18th, 2012. Um, I know this is technically a retro analysis episode, eight, nine years, whatever it is now. It doesn't seem like a very long time, but um, again, we'll just keep with the retro analysis format here and go back and chat <laughs> about this game a little bit um, with some fun memories. But uh, this was the follow-up to Borderland 1 that came out in 2009. We know both of these were developed by Gear- Gearbox Software and Aspire um, and published by 2K Games. Uh, we've seen how far they've come since then. Back in 2012, just to paint a little bit of a picture about what that looked like for everybody, um, I think Wayne often refers to this as the golden era of gaming. Um, oh, good year, good year, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> was a very good year. We've got right here, Dishonored came out in 2012 Ooh. from Bethesda, Far Cry 3, Halo 4, Mass Effect 3, Assassin's Creed 3, Journey, Walking Dead, remember the Telltale series, XCOM, Black Ops 2, um, from Call of Duty, Diablo 3 from Blizzard, and then Sleeping Dogs, and a lot more, obviously. But just, man, what a year for games um, all the way back yonder, right? Yeah, seriously. one So many good games, and I have, like, fond memories of most of them. Um, I mean, especially big Halo fan, Halo 4. Heck yeah, they're going to continue the original trilogy. Stoked for that. Dishonored. Like, I played Dishonored, like, a couple of weeks ago again, and it still holds up. And I think this is also true to Borderlands, like Borderlands 1 and especially Borderlands 2. They hold up really, really well. Yeah, they really do. And we've both we all been back here playing it within the last week or so and just uh, diving right back into this. And man, what a gem. What was it about this game that stood out to you guys at the time? Do you remember the hype? Do you remember the uh, Cage the Elephant theme song that I can't remember if it applied (laughs) to Borderlands 1 or 2, but Ain't No Rest for the Wicked, whatever that was? Um, How was this game when it was starting to get hyped? Um, to, to me, the 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 absolute champion aspect of Borderlands is its co-op. It is just so much fun to play with other Definitely. people. Uh, whenever I first came across Borderlands, it was Borderlands 1. Played the first game on my own, played about an hour of it, and just went, it just seems so... It didn't seem particularly interesting or particularly fun. It just seemed like a game where you were going through the motions, and I, I got bored of it real quick. Uh, but a friend talked me into having a bash with them co-op loved it played through all all three borderlands one and then the sequel came and i just remember right from the start uh you get that first mission where claptrap wakes you up out of the snow um <laughs> he brings you in you're fighting i think it's i don't think it is bully mongs but it's something along the lines of bully mongs right at the start bully yeah, mongs yeah. or something like that yeah but no it, it was actually bully mongs are they bully mongs yeah 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 um <laughs> and it's just so much more polished it, almost every aspect of it it feels better it looks better um the just the interaction with the npcs clap traps introduction into the game like just initial impressions were just this is good and it was kind of the opposite whereas borderlands one took me a little while to grow into borderlands two just yeah this this rocks right from the start yeah. And I also feel like when I started Borderlands 2, when it came out, I started it and I felt like everything you've experienced, everything you've done in Borderlands 1, they just cranked up to, not not even 11, just cranked it up to 12. Everything is better about this game. Uh, like the <laughs> <laughs> like the, the graphics, I mean, it's cell shading, but still, it looks a little bit nicer. It ran smoother. Uh, also the hot, like you finally had a mini map. I remember in the first Borderlands game, every time going into into the inventory, and have to look up, okay, where do I need to go? This is gone now. And yeah, fuck yeah. Good yeah. choice. It was a great, great game. You had your, you know, charming graphics back in 2009, 2012. That was kind of unique at the time. We didn't see a lot of art styles like that in games. Um, you know, the character development, or not character development so much, because uh, there wasn't a whole <laughs> ton of it, if we're being honest. But um, the characters were attractive. We loved Claptrap. Uh, we loved Jack. Um, you know, pretty much everybody else on Pandora, all the Vault Hunters. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some dry personalities there, too. But this game was good enough, too, to get a goddamn movie based off of it that's going to come out soon, we know. Um, oh, yeah. We got, what, Jack Black's just been cast as Claptrap, I believe. Um, some other big roles out there, too. But um, the game was good enough where we're getting a movie now. You know, pretty much 
well, I, I guess you can't say it's 10 years later because Borderlands 3 just came out pretty recently, but yeah. um, nonetheless, we're getting a movie for Borderlands, hey. Yeah, I'm I'm not so sure about this movie yet because they cast Kevin Hart for Roland, like one of the most serious characters in the game. I don't know how this is going to pan out, but they cast uh, Jamie Lee Curtis as, I think, uh, Professor Tennis. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, so I could see that. But yeah, Kevin Hart, I don't know. <laughs> the, the, the cast of that movie is bizarre. It really seems like a bunch of friends just getting together and going, let's make a movie. What will we do? I don't know. What's popular with the kids? This Borderlands thing seems to be popular. You know, it, it doesn't... I'm not getting, like, passion vibes from it. I'm getting let's make some money vibes from it. Mm. Um, and I don't think that leads to a good movie. I'm, I'm not excited for this whatsoever. The fact that they cast one of the dumbest actors to play as the most serious character in <laughs> in borderlands is bizarre like you know roland like you could have had so many even if you wanted to take it in a slight comedy role the rock would have been perfect for roland yeah definitely you know? uh, and they went with kevin hart it's i, I don't know what is going on there. <laughs> they're, they're apparently bizarre. good friends or something i don't know but yeah you said best the, buddies so you said the word bizarre the, the, the cast are like one character away from it being a jumanji movie <laughs> that's true you said the word bizarre by the way which i think totally fits the theme here when you think about borderlands because borderlands as a whole in this entire franchise um whether you're looking at the trilogy or the pre-sequel they're all bizarre um i, I think the big marketing aspect of this game back at the time i remember because i remember the e3 trailer the hype um you know you see that little what are those little things called they're like the little dogs that run around out in the mm. um, skags uh, Skags, yeah, yes. skags, I, right? Skags. I still call people I don't like skags. Um, and so, <laughs> <laughs> like no one will ever get it, but we do. Not, not to um, their face, mm -hmm. of course. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> skags. Just behind their backs. I right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you've got that first trailer where you see a skag get run over the highway. You got the great music and all that stuff going on. But I remember the pitch at the time too for was the the weapon variations. Um, that was a huge thing. Yeah. Um, and I believe in this game, the total count for it ended up being something like. Um, it slips me here. It was something over the millions marker. I, what I, I remember it. It was 17.75 million variations of guns. Now that's 17 million guns. My yeah, God. I mean, basically I, the guns were procedurally generated. So they probably mm -hmm. designed, you know, a hundred scopes and a hundred SMG bodies and a hundred handles and a hundred triggers and a hundred rocket launchers and stuff like that. And so whenever you get a new weapon in a, in a chest it pulls all those different things together and so the the total amount of potential possible weapons is 17.75 million uh it took me a long time to collect them all but i got there in the end my what? god no, I'm, joking. <laughs> you I'm, joking. All I'm joking jesus <laughs> i was like well i'm not gonna question that i know you got some hours on here but man i was waiting right, for man. a laugh there and it just went silent and I was like, oh, god. <laughs> just like a slow clip awesome man <laughs> very good job I mean, but the I weapons. They, oh, god! I, th I think they marketed as something like this game is like a jazillion weapons. They did. Like, yeah. I, like yeah. I have like the, all the all the marketing material. I just see right now, uh, like a jazillion weapons, and this game is extra dub wop because like dubstep was like a really big thing back in the day. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the golden era of dubstep back in 2012, and they were using a yeah. lot of that in the commercials for this. Wop wop wop. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what was it for you guys that made this game so unique though? You know, we know it's kind of got its own art style. We know the weapon variations and stuff like that really stands out. But um, you know, Wayne, you mentioned the co-op. What else about this yeah. game just really made it so different? To to me, it was it was the loot system. I don't think we had had a game like this before. We we had lots of looters in terms of like if you go back to stuff like first first example comes off the top of my head is you know Diablo Diablo games or. Yeah those sort of dungeon crawler games where you go through the same levels and the whole objective is just to get better loot so that you can do the same thing again on a harder difficulty with better loot to get better loot and the cycle kind of continues. Uh, but we'd never seen that in a shooter before. You know, Halo never had that concept. You know, um, Half-Life or Doom had never introduced anything like that. And for to take all those sort of like influences from an RPG game and then put them into a first-person shooter, and then tie in a unique art style. Now, we'd, we'd seen stuff like Borderlands before. We'd seen shell cell shaded stuff. Uh, games like 13, I'm sure you'll remember. Um, there's a game called Cell Damage. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, they, they took they took something that pre-existed, i.e. cell shaded graphics, and they'd done it better than anyone else had. Um, oh, yeah. They took a real sort of, like, 
dumb toilet sense of humor but they've done it well they've done it right you know there's stuff like that it, <laughs> that can be so hit and miss you know fart jokes only go so far but if if, if you make a good fart joke you know you're on to a winner um <laughs> And then, like we've 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 touched on the characters, you know, just really really likable characters. I mean, we talk about Handsome Jack. Handsome Jack is one of the biggest assholes in video game history. Like I, I can't think any was of anyone as like deplorable as Handsome Jack, yeah. and yet we love him because he's funny with it and he's hilarious. Um, he's witty. There's something incredibly likable about Handsome Jack. Um, and it's all that. It's the characters. It's the first time we're getting the litter shooter. It's the cell shaded graphics. It's it's the worlds that we were presented with. I I know I'm rambling on a bit here, but all those things combined into one. There's lots of games where we see them pull like one new thing and you go, this is a good game because of that one thing they've done right. Borderlands 2 was a good game because they got so much right. Yeah. And put it all into one big package. And it was great. Wayne, you keep saying that term looter shooter. Would you guys say that this game crowned the term looter shooter, at least Absolutely. the Borderlands series? Absolutely, one hundred percent. Without a doubt. Yeah, um, I would say that this this came about as this was the first looter shooter, and I don't think we would have games like The Division and Destiny if it wasn't for Borderlands. I th I think those games kind of took sort of what Borderlands done, ran with it, and created like the live service game, so to speak. But I still wouldn't consider Borderlands. I still think there's a difference between a live service game and a litter shooter. Yeah, um, and I think I think the best way to sum that up for me is within, I'll, I'll, I'll compare Borderlands to Destiny. Within Borderlands, you've got something like a 30 or a 40 hour campaign, right? And then the credits roll. And for a lot of people, they get to that point and that's them done. Game over. They've finished it. But if they wish to, they can keep playing to get better loot. And you know, rinse through the the raid bosses over and over again, and that seems to be like a bonus part of the game. Now, whenever you take something like Destiny, you've got like an eight hour campaign, and that's almost like a sort of token thing to do. And the game doesn't really start until after that. The credits roll, and then you start playing Destiny. Then you get into that cycle and that grind. And I think that's the difference. You know, Destiny almost isn't worth playing if you're only going to play the campaign. Whereas Borderlands is definitely worth playing if you're only interested in the campaign and you're going to shut down as soon as the credits roll. And, and that's what I love about it. Because I actually played Borderlands, I played it on the 360 and then I played it on the Xbox One. And, and I brought my progress across, but um, started again on, uh, we'll probably touch on this later, but started again on True Vault Hunter mode. Oh. And the second time around playing we done that we got to the credits and then we kept playing because we wanted to you know keep leveling up we wanted to get better gear we wanted to get on and beat the raid bosses and it almost becomes a different game and and i think that is another strength of of borderlands that ability to to be a sort of like a campaign game that you just play through but also that looter shooter endless grind game it balances them perfectly it's it nails it it just nails it so well yeah i think you're touching on a, on a good subject there because i felt exactly the same when i was playing through the game back in the day it is a fairly long campaign and i love that all the characters are just so over the top and some jokes are just so silly and so stupid that they that they are so bad that they become good again just think <laughs> about like <laughs> just think about like what was it again the 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 horse that uh, handsome jack is mentioning what was it called a stallion or something that he's like keep, keep <laughs> babbling weird. on about but, yeah something stallion. Super weird ass stallion and not but stallion no <laughs> or was it i only played it in butt german stallion. is it the and there, diamond, there was called the there was called <laughs> <All right. laughs> <laughs> so yeah i played through the game obviously loved it and like i said it's everything the first game did amped up to 11. Um, mm -hmm. And I felt like when the DLC started to come out, they felt like raids to me, like, especially like the smaller DLCs that were coming out, you can finish them in like two, three hours. It felt like one raid that you're doing, like one run through it, maybe in one sitting, mm -hmm. and it gets harder and harder and harder. And I love that there were so many DLCs. They were so consistently good uh, and they got bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, you, you can just like play this game for for ages actually mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And those introduced some new, uh, some new DLC, by the way, like you got different character classes, things like that. We already had four pretty good ones, right? What were those? Those were, um, there were four different classes you had the option to choose from there. You had the commando class, you had the siren, the gun zerker, um, the assassin as well. Those were all options there. And yeah. I, I mean, God, you, you touched on some of these characters already, but just absolute gem classes to play through. And they were so different, mm -hmm. um, no matter how you chose to play with them. So who did you guys play as? I, I always oh, go, go ahead, Tony. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a pleb at this, I guess. I always go pretty <laughs> standard vanilla in games. Like if I'm playing Elder Scrolls, like Skyrim or Oblivion, I'm always picking an Imperial because I'm just that vanilla with stuff. Um, so I was I was commando here um, just because that's what appealed to me and seemed the most basic at the time. I don't get too crazy with like assassin stuff, rogue, stealth, um, any of that. So commando is mine. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually the same as Tony. Um, when it comes to Borderlands game, I have to have my turret. I love the turrets in Borderlands. Uh, once, you know, you hit that area and all the enemies start spawning and they're coming mm -hmm. out of their huts and they're crawling out of the ground. Through the, especially when if you level up the turret enough you can rather than just throwing it out in front of you you can kind of like warp it to an area so you can like fire it right into the center where a bunch of enemies are and it'll just you know spin around and shoot everything and i just i just, especially even there's times you can get it leveled up enough that you can just fire your turret out and sort of sit back and just wait for <laughs> things to die you know uh, it was one of the things site. one of the things i missed most about um for in borderlands 3 was the lack of turret now there is there's one of the there's one of the characters i did use um and you get like a a mech and there is a way to use it as a turret what you can actually do is spawn the mech and then jump out of it and it will stand there as a turret but it takes about about eight seconds to do that and it's just nowhere near satisfying as just throwing that turret down i hope if there's more borderlands games like please bring back a turret it is like a staple of borderlands for me and i just miss it so much so yeah yeah, that, that one of my playthroughs was Axton uh, Commando with the turret. Uh, the other time I played through was, uh, you were mentioning the um, DLC characters. So there's a Macromancer, and forgive yes. me, I'm just looking up the name of her, Gage. Gage the Macromancer. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason I liked her was because it almost is like a turret, but it's a robot that runs about and shoots <laughs> things. You know, so it's just, yeah. it's the same, it's a turret, except it moves about. Um, mm -hmm. And again, brilliant. Absolutely love playing as that character. Great. Um, what about you, Alex? What did you play as? Well, I'm usually more the support character player. So uh, in Borderlands 2, most of the time I played the Siren because there is this face lock ability. You can like face lock an enemy into it and you can power up this face lock. So every time you shoot the enemy that's in the face lock, uh, everyone in the party gets some health back. And if you if you kill the enemy, while he's in that state, everybody in the party gets like a huge amount of health back. So that's what I was always going for. Yeah, everybody um, needs the support. We, we, when makes I it... played it co op mm -hmm. with my girlfriend, like she was always the siren. And she still is like every time there's a Borderlands game, come out, she'll go straight for the siren <laughs> character. Um, it's the equivalent um, of a healer, right? Well, yeah, it it's equivalent yeah, of a healer. It uh, does a bit of damage as well um, yeah. whenever they're in sort of like a bubble that traps the characters. Um, and it's great whenever you've got, if there's an area and there's, say, 10 enemies but there's one like really, really strong one. You know, one tactic could be to, you know, phase lock the really strong one, take out all the other little enemies and then focus on him at the end. Uh, but it was great because you can co-op, you know, one person throws someone in their phase lock, then I can throw down the turret, which targets them. And God, I just want to go and play it nice and they're talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think also uh, if, you, if you combine the classes, um, you, can, you, can, you can do some really cool techniques and tactics. Um, yeah. Remember, remember the boss, uh, what was it called? Chromorex? The like really big yep. fucking reptile thing. Uh, we played it in four player co op like back in the day and took us forever to kill him. And thank God we had like all four different classes because otherwise it would have been like a shit show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everybody just goes out there, burns their ammo, and that's it. You uh, touched on DLC, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. Oh my God. This, this game had some of the best DLC I think I've ever seen or played in a game oh, yeah. I'll, I'll i'll throw that out there um obviously there's some games of great dlc but goddamn um you had a ton of dlc four of those were big story chunks of dlc um i can't remember the exact play time off the top of my head but some of these were long as hell 
they all were pretty flat and affordable. Um, you know, this wasn't mm -hmm. like, you know, a $50 season pass or anything crazy. I think there is now, um, obviously a season pass, but at the time they all came out for $9 and 99 cents. Or if you remember back in the day, these sons of bitches cost 800 Microsoft points. Do you remember when that was a thing? Ooh, um, Microsoft, ooh, points. Microsoft points. <laughs> <laughs> but remember those? Had, those are horrendous, man. Uh, I think the first time I ever used Microsoft points, this is off topic, but was on like horse armor in Elder Scrolls Oblivion. That oh, Jesus, of course. <laughs> what else what else like the perfect example for this <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible but so there was four pieces of dlc um primarily related to the story there's a ton of others obviously but the big ones were mm -hmm. captain scarlet and her pirate's booty mr torg's campaign of carnage sir hammerlock's <laughs> big game hunt and then my personal favorite tiny tina's assault on dragon keep oh um, yeah which are all just gems god damn yeah yeah the like, the the Tiny Tina one, I think, was sort of um, anticipated the most because I think a lot of people really, really took the Tiny Tina after playing the campaign. She was just such a fun and silly and enjoyable character. That was um, a nutty you know, character, for sure. Sending Absolutely. after missiles, but referring to them as badonka donks. And she was just... <laughs> I, th I think she was meant to be like 14 years old, but she was clearly mm. a complete lunatic psycho. And yeah, probably probably one of my favorite characters from, from the series. Uh, they... They decided to kind of grow her up in, in Borderlands 3. And I think she's about like 22 years old. And yeah, yeah. It, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work yeah, anymore that, at, at all. At that point, she's, you know? yeah, just like most of us. Um, yeah. <laughs> like it's but a 23 year old <laughs> psycho age. So, yeah. but as, as I say, pe people love that character. So when they found out that that story was going to come out, um, that it was basically her playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, but uh, as, as fun as that was, it actually took a really grown up and mature approach to dealing with grief. Uh, if you remember the story, mm -hmm. it was basically she had Roland playing the game of D&D, even though it was set after Roland's death. And it was her coming to terms with Roland dying. And towards the end of it, there's actually a few, you wouldn't expect this from a Borderlands game, but there's a few really, really touching you know, heartwarming moments and stuff. Um, you know, the characters mm. sort of supporting each other and looking after each other and helping each other deal with this grief of losing a friend. Um, and I know we were all there just to shoot, you know, zombie unicorns and stuff, but I, I just thought that was a, a, really, <laughs> there a, lot a of them. really great yeah. aspect of that game. And it, and it spoke it spoke to the writing, you know, the writing in Borderlands 2 was just, uh, across the series, the Borderlands 2 writing is by far yeah. the best, by far. I think um, the credit for for the for the writing goes to Anthony Birch, uh, who was the game writer at the time. I don't know if you guys remember that uh, YouTube show or it was on GameTrailers.com. Hey Ash, what you playing? Uh, the brother of this is actually the person who wrote the story of the game, and his sister, who played uh, the leading role in the series, uh, actually voiced Tiny Tina. I did not know that. All right. Okay. Right. Fun facts. Yeah. <laughs> the more you know those were those were a great dlc though i mean uh gosh the most memorable for me by far like you were saying wayne was definitely tiny tia's dlc and just yeah, that yeah. finale which you know with the dragon and everything the ending I, like you were saying it, it hit a level of maturity we hadn't seen in borderlands before and it was kind yeah. of unexpected I think one, um, one of my favorite things was the way she would like retroactively change things you know it's things would happen <laughs> in the story i think at yeah. the very start you know it turns up and it's like I can't remember what way it goes. It's either really dark and rainy and stormy. And then someone goes, you know, that isn't right. And then she goes, okay, then it's sun and rainbows and stuff. And <laughs> the whole world just completely changes, you know. With so it's it's kind of like WandaVision. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't 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 start that subject. No here spoilers right here. No, no spoilers. No, Whoa. No. <laughs> Disney yeah. Plus, ladies and gentlemen, Disney Plus. I, I do think uh with not the, a sponsor. Tiny Teams DLC, the, there was a rather long stretch of going through like um caves and like area where the dwarves lived and mm. stuff and i think i honestly think that aspect of it might have dragged on just a little bit too much uh and some of the concepts at the start like the intro of it weren't necessarily followed through the whole way but overall yeah out of all the dlcs definitely the best really enjoyed that yeah hands down we were talking yeah, about 
10 oh, out sorry. of 10. <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 10. We were talking about weapons earlier and, it, you know, thinking back to that 17 million figure and, and how you get that number. Um, Cause it's still like on the top of my mind. I just can't fucking believe there's a video game capable of that much variety in it. Mm. Um, but I think a lot of that drew from obviously the variety that came from the different elements you could have on those guns. Right. Um, and I, I can't believe we haven't mentioned this yet, but just the satisfaction you get from quote looter shooter, um, when you would shoot an enemy and the numbers appear and you see these numbers just fucking showing up like you're in goddamn Las Vegas in front of a goddamn, uh, <laughs> you know, um, machine or something like that. And you just hit yeah. the jackpot. It's a beautiful sight. Um, Absolutely. you know, you, you had all kinds of elemental damage at the time. You had things like corrosive, incendiary, explosive, shock, um, slag. Can't forget that. Um, but god damn, these just made that game so different and they contributed to so many different play styles out there, it felt like, based on whatever the hell you were going to do. Yeah, the, the different element stuff, I have to confess, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the reason being that, well, well two reasons, it's kind of twofold. Uh, number one, if you wanted, for example, um, to have an SMG, an assault rifle, a pistol, and a rocket launcher, but you also wanted to have a slag, a corrosive, an electric, and a fire weapon. That's a lot of weapons to kind of be managing and kind of, you know, dropping in and out of your inventory and stuff. And then the second reason is you can kind of brute force it. You know, if there's an enemy, you can look at the color of bar above their head, and that will tell you what sort of um, element is best used against them. But even if it's one that you're meant to be using fire, you know, if you just slam them with, with um, you know, the electricity, they will die. You know, it's not like they're immune. It's just kind of like a, here's some advice on what weapon you should be using against these guys. Now, we we did play, I touched on this earlier, um, the game comes with three difficulty modes. You know, there's the normal, and after you finish that, you can get a uh, true Vault Hunter mode, and then it's up to ultimate Vault Hunter mode. Um, on that last difficulty, that third playthrough, at that stage, you have to be using those elements. If you don't, mm -hmm. you can't brute force it. You can't just hammer away at an enemy and hope that eventually they'll go down. You have to be using the right weapons all the time to beat them. And it becomes so tough. It is incredibly tough in Ultimate Fault Hunter mode. I think we got about five or six missions into it before we just went, you know what, this is this is hardcore. <laughs> and, and we, are not cut, we are not cut out for this whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, but but it's 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 a great aspect of the game. It's something I've really enjoyed. Um, so some of the the raid bosses and stuff go through different phases. So they might like attack you with uh, electricity, and that's when you've got to be using a certain weapon. And then after you get their uh, their energy down a certain amount, you've got to switch to a different element in order to be you know most effective. Um, and that adds a bit because, as I say, on normal mode, even with the bosses, you can just you can just hammer at them with anything, and they will go down eventually. True words have never been spoken, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what do you guys remember about this story? Yeah, I was just thinking about this. Um, just a point when you reach uh, where Sanctuary, like the city, just lifts up and becomes like like a, yeah. like, a, like a flying city. One of the best moments in the game. Just like, yeah, I think you have to start all the engines in, in the city around, like walking around, switching on the engines, and then it just like lifts off. And underneath it is one of the most interesting areas, in my opinion, in the game. Because if you remember, there's this like cave city sort of thing, and with the hidden Minecraft area. I don't know if you ever seen this. It's like I did not see that. All right, so it's like one of the most famous Easter eggs ever, and I think one of the best ever, in my opinion. Um, there's basically a wall that you can like shoot down somewhere down there, and when you go through this wall, like everything turns into Minecraft, and you can get like Minecraft uh, gear. You can get like like headgear that looks like Steve from Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> creepers like <laughs> what creepers are in there you can kill them they explode when they when you kill them just just like in minecraft <laughs> how about that what yeah. what else about yeah. the story i i mean I, I remember vaguely a little bit about you know you have the vault hunters you know jack's trying to keep him the fuck off pandora um mm -hmm. and there's some comedy in there obviously <laughs> too but you know th there was there was a bit to that story i, I think it, no yeah. definitely i mean compared to borderlands one the borderlands two story was there was a lot more to it like as a, i've already touched on the writing but um borderlands one was basically there is a vault go open the vault um Borderlands yeah. 2, there was a lot more to it. Uh, I mean, it starts off that um, they have discovered that after opening the vault in Borderlands 1, that Iridium is now starting to appear in Pandora. And mm -hmm. there seems to be this, like, 
not so much a war, but a lot of people fighting over over this iridium. Uh, and that's where Handsome Jack comes into it because he runs Hyperion Corporation. So he wants all this iridium. Um, he comes down and then you're trying to basically stop him from doing what he wants to do while at the same time, there's a couple of vaults that need opened because I think Jack wants to open a vault because he believes that that's going to give him ultimate power or something. I'll be honest. The, and there was a point. Power. <laughs> power. <laughs> one, one of the points I did want to make about it, though, was, and this, this is one thing I actually don't like about Borderlands, is a lot of those story beats, a lot of the exposition, and a lot of the dialogue that you're getting is, is presented during gunfights. So you'll be in yeah. the middle of a fight with, you know, surrounded by 20 enemies and you're kind of focusing on, you know, throwing your turret down, someone's firing a phase lock, you're shooting him, you're shooting her. Um, and all the same time, handsome Jack's rabbit in your ear, you know, telling you what's <laughs> what's, what's going on in the story. And I'm like, I, I can't focus on all of this at the same time. Um, and even though I've played it through a couple of times, I still i am not 100% about, about the story. I think borderlands lore and borderlands stories to me can get a bit muddled and a bit confusing um you know you, mm. you do you get very very uh familiar with the characters and you get to know the characters well and some of the little you know subplots within like whenever you know um there's the train that you have to destroy and you go to tiny tina and she wants you to get the rocket so that you can blow it up and stuff like that you know parts of that's easy to follow but i think some of the the overarching storylines it's it's easy to miss parts because the gameplay and the stories just kind of smashed into one. You know, I, th I think there's a lot to be said for play a bit of game, get a cutscene, play a bit more game, get a cutscene. You know, kind of like um, a recent game I've played that'd be like that'd be Resident Evil 4. You know, there's yep. never that intersection. It's it's nice and clear cut and it makes it very, very easy to follow. Maybe I'm just too stupid for Borderlands. Who knows? <laughs> well, no, I, I, I agree, actually. I think Borderlands is always more about the gameplay, about the feel yeah, of the game, yeah. and less about the story. Um, just uh, this, this game, to me, feels like it's been made in mind with, with the uh, Paradigm gameplay first, everything else is second. So yeah. that you're just like, when you play it, you pick up the controller, you just have a, like, like a good time. You, you have a fun time. That's it. And I know, like, I remember a bit of the story, but to be honest, I don't care about the about this as much. And usually, I'm all for good stories, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you're both right on this. This is definitely one of those games where it's just not known for having the strongest story on the earth. Don't get me wrong; it's not terrible, but it's not great either. Um, but the gameplay is what really stood out for this, and I think that was really pushed forward by a lot of characters. Um, some of those, I'll just I'll just name off some here: um, Claptrap, obviously, Brick, Doctor Zed, Ellie, Lilith, uh, Mad Moxie. Um, Marcus Kinsade, Michael Memari, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Mordecai, um, Patricia Tanis, Roland, Scooter, Sir Hammerlock, Tiny Tina, Crazy yeah. Earl. Um, that cast goes on forever, but god damn, okay. what, a, what a group of characters. And any favorites one thing, in there? What's yeah, one thing, one thing that I need to touch on right now, uh, I think it's the best scene in the entire game. When you walk up with Claptrap toward, towards the end of the game, and he's like, oh, nothing can stop me. No no one can stop me now. And then this door opens and it's just like stairs. And he's like, stairs? <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah. So freaking good. Actually, it reminds, me of, um, reminds me of Ed 209 from Robocop. Oh, yeah. That's, that's how I defeated him <laughs> with the stairs. Uh, yeah, Tony, you, you rattle through a bunch of characters. Or has anyone got any favorites? Holy shit. I mean, you know, I, I think obviously anybody's going to say Claptrap, Tiny Tina, definitely top two. But if I got to throw another one there, I love Sir Hammerlock. I, I love that yeah. African safari vibe, um, you know, where you're just going out there hunting big monsters uh, for loot and then returning back with your bounty or whatever the case may be. I, I love that in games for some reason. It's in every single fucking RPG since the dawn of time. <laughs> but um, I, I love that. Yeah. One of my favorite, and I think probably one of the most quotable characters from Borderlands is Marcus, the arms dealer. There, there's just, <laughs> because every oh, time yeah. you go to him, he's maybe got about five or six lines, but it's not like there's so many games where they haven't recorded enough dialogue and it starts to get annoying. I, I just love Marcus's lines. Like there's, I think it's Borderlands too. Uh, every time you go up to like one of the, you know, the ammo vending machines, mm. he's just like, Ammo, because without it, you're just a schmuck with a weight paperweight. And I, <laughs> I just absolutely love him. He's like, it's just, a, it's just this character that you know in real life you would absolutely hate, but 
all he cares about is selling weapons and he doesn't care how many people you kill with them as long as he gets his, his dollar from from selling those weapons he's kind of uh, like that guy from our recent episode of resident evil 4 um <laughs> the yeah, merchant what, you what are you buying, buying? what are you buying <laughs> um i got a lot of good things on sale stranger <laughs> it's, it's marcus as well that sort of like narrates the intro to each of the movie or each of the mm. movies um, each of the movies all right obviously. Yeah, wow <laughs> um so yeah marcus i think marcus is great mm. claptrap you you mentioned a lot of people hit claptrap who the fuck are right. these people but i never i never <laughs> get him out of that. here i yeah. always thought he was really funny like genuinely really really good loved claptrap um, man a sense of humor if you fucking hate claptrap how dare you there, there's, <laughs> like, how could you <laughs> there's, there's one character i don't think he even has a name but he's, he's definitely my favorite character in borderlands 2 there is a mission and i'm almost sure the mission is called shoot me in the head <laughs> i knew you face. were gonna say this <laughs> and there's just there's just this guy on this little raised bit in the middle of a level and he's just kind of like completely loony and going mental and he's just screaming that he wants you to shoot him in the face so you get the mission you shoot him in the face and then the mission's over and that is it and it's just it's i remember the, that yep it's the brevity of it that is just so good um <laughs> There's, do you remember the double rainbow moment as well? You remember Whoa. the double. Whoa. You remember the double, double rainbow. rainbow. <laughs> yeah. Whoa! I, I love that because I think it, it must have been one of the first games that like put a meme into a video game. You know, yeah. I, I can't it didn't take itself too serious at all. <laughs> Definitely not. Uh, what about you, Alex? Uh, I just just lost track here for for a second. I'm so sorry. <laughs> 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 but we were talking about beautiful characters of Borderlands. Beautiful, beautiful characters, yeah. like. I really think, um, yeah, Claptrap, of course. Uh, I like Tiny Tina, as we touched before, because she's just so bonkers. And unpopular opinion, I really like Mordecai. He was the yeah. uh, one with the bird in the first game. Yep. And he's just like drunk all the time in the second game. And you can <laughs> you can really feel his grief once his bird dies later later in the game, because you go on, like the, when, when you recruited him, you go on to uh, rescue his bird and uh, he just get gets killed and he loses it he's going bonkers yeah i felt that <laughs> i think something they've done really well with this um is so i'll give an example of i'm trying to think of an example of someone who's done it wrong there's a lot of games where you get the sequel and the original characters are gone and you get new characters mm -hmm. and then you bump into the old characters in the game and personally i'm usually thinking don't show me these characters let me play as these characters because these are the ones i've you know grown attached to and love and why i love the series because of these characters but in borderlands 2 when we got that initial set of four new characters and then we found out that the original four playable characters from borderlands 1 were going to be npcs in the game i'm thinking mm. oh no they're, they're the characters i want to play as i don't want to How bump into you? them and get missions from them but they played it so well you know every time one of those characters showed up it was like it was a moment you know, yeah. and it was especially, I think you just mentioned Mordecai. Um, when Mordecai turned up, it was like, ah, no way Mordecai's in this, this is great. <laughs> um, and, and I also got attached to the characters we were playing as. So th I think they pulled that off brilliantly, absolutely brilliantly. And they even, you know, killing off Roland was, I, I kind of mentioned this with the Tiny Tina stuff, you mm -hmm. know, no matter how stupid this game is, how silly it is, you know, toilet humor the whole way through it you still get attached to the characters and you still feel something and there's still that emotional attachment whenever they kill off a character like roland you know yeah, um, yeah. so just just yeah. great just great the way they managed to do that yeah like i when they killed off roland in the game i was really pissed this is like uh <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was the same level pissed like in uh final fantasy 7 when they killed Aerith. <laughs> Jeez, I was so pissed back then. And when they killed off Roland, I was like, okay, you know what, Jack? It was your time to to bite the dust. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about, okay. I think, one of the most overlooked aspects of this game. You know, we talk about the characters a lot, the guns, things like that, when Borderlands comes into a conversation. But nobody really spends too much time talking about the enemies because um, they're so unique and there's so many variations of them. You've got the bandit types, you know, where you've got the little midget psychos. You've got the big Goliath-looking dudes. Um, you've got the Hyperion robots. You've got the creatures like Skags, like you were talking about earlier um you know bully mong so many other things um you know mm -hmm. thrashers thrashers i think that's what they were called 
Um, yeah, yeah. What did you guys think about the enemies in this game? I think they range from pretty generic. Like when I think about the Skags, it's just like, okay, it's dogs in another video game to really interesting. Um, I think the Threshers, as you touch of them, they were pretty in interesting, this, this worm-like beings. And I think there was also like one Thresher uh, boss it was like almost impossible to kill at first. Terramorphous. Um, yeah, thank yep. you. God. Uh, um, so, sorry to interrupt you, but I have, I have to mention this. I started playing Borderlands 2 on the 1st of February 2013. Mm -hmm. And I, I checked this because I went back through my achievements. I beat Terramorphous in October of 2019. So it took like <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. It took over six and a half years of playing Borderlands 2 before I beat that raid boss. Because it's That's designed, some dedication. Wow. It's, you, you were saying earlier, Alex, about how you know it's great to have you know four player co op, and especially mm -hmm. if you've got like one of each class, you know, it really, really helps. That that's what well, that's what a raid boss is designed for. You know, get those four players in, max out your team, have the right skills available, and go for it. And it'll be really, really challenging, even if you do that. Well, mm -hmm. we didn't have more friends to play borderlands it was just the two of us <laughs> and we we really struggled with that there's even ways yeah. to cheese it there's a certain rock you can hide behind and just you know chip away at terramorphous even trying that we kept getting knocked off the side and destroyed um and it wasn't until there was a dlc came out for borderlands 2 just before borderlands 3 came out um i mentioned it earlier to alex but i can't remember the name of it right mm. now fight for sanctuary yeah, um, I think there was a DLC that uh, it was used. It's, it's like a bridge between Borderlands 2 exactly. and 3, right? Yep. yep. This is the one DLC that I actually never played because when it came out, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to play for Borderlands 2 right now. So shortly before Borderlands 3 uh, like uh, comes out. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever we got that, there's actually a higher class of weapons. So the weapons kind of go, mm. you know, common, um, rare, something else, legendary. And then they brought in another class of weapons, which was pearlescent. Yeah, these, allow me to jump in there because you've got, I think it's the green is the beginner ones, right? Yep. And then yeah. blue is uncommon, purple is rare. Um, and then it just goes up from there like to orange, um, pink, I mean, yeah, yeah. legendary, yeah. whatever you want to call it, pearlescence too, like you were saying, yeah. syrups. Per pearlescence were the new ones. And those those weapons were literally like, almost as if they were covered in glitter, like space glitter or something. Mm. Uh, and they were just... <laughs> like so overpowered and at once once we got those we could then go back to terramorphous we got those weapons in true vault hunter mode and then went back with them into normal mode and only then were we able to beat terramorphous so um <laughs> oh, geez. Th thank you for just listening to my terramorphous ted talk um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry Alex, I mean, we, you, we, you, were, we were talking about no worries things. it's all good <laughs> <laughs> it's all good like uh touching touching on this what you were talking about like uh, wayne and i we played a bit of borderlands 2 before we started to record the podcast just to get a feel of the game again and wayne is like massively overpowered <laughs> we started like a mission and it was just just a little bit we started a mission and it was like this huge uh, i don't know pickup truck coming up it just came up had just seen the health bar wayne shoots one time enemy gone and so this was supposed to be a boss fight <laughs> when you join that co-op game and your buddy's got like all the hyper powered yeah, up yeah. shit and you're just yeah. like, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. here. <laughs> and, and then, we went, then we went into, was it Motor Mama was the boss? Yeah, yeah Motor Mama. Motor Mama. Oh, yeah. and, and again, I think maybe five, six seconds to take that boss down. <laughs> um, you can just which, like, which, see, see the health bar chip away like completely with a couple which, of which shots. Which reminds me of another story. Um, Sorry to bore you with another another TED talk. <laughs> You're but, not boring me. Uh, it's it's me and my girlfriend Claire that always play Borderlands, and it was Borderlands One uh, that we were playing, and we must have been like ninety eight percent of the way through it. It was literally the last level where you go to the vault, fight the last boss, and I was speaking to a friend and work about it, um, and he was like, "What? You play Borderlands?" I was like, "Yeah." He was like, "I I love Borderlands. Do you play an Xbox?" I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Can I join your game?" And I'm kind of like, "Well, me and my girlfriend have kind of." you know played the whole way through it together so like, i kind of i kind of wanted to say no no you can't but you can't do that to your mates you can't say no you're not allowed to play with me so we were kind of like um reluctantly it was like yeah yeah sure we'll be on about half seven tonight you know hop on so we're like literally playing the very last level 
Um, and any time we finish an area, you know, we run around and mop up, try and get as much ammo as you can, see if there's any loot. Um, it's the best thing in the world. Like when there's a pile of glowing yeah. loot there and you just run over it and just fucking absorb <laughs> like like a sponge. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so we're on this sub boss and my friend jumps into the game. And like the same that happened to yourself, Alex, except it was, mm. you know, it was the climax of the game. And he just goes pew, 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 pew. <laughs> and, it's, and he's dead. And we're like, oh, okay. So we didn't really... <laughs> We didn't really get to kill that, did we? Uh, so we start running around as we usually do, trying to get ammo. And he heads straight for the door and goes through the next door. And we're like, um, are, we're heading on then. Are we not going to like communicate here and say what we're doing? <laughs> uh, and he just tore straight through it, killed the final boss of the game oh, geez, with like three or this. four shots. Oh, and we were shit. just went like, the, the end of this game has just been ruined on us you know we never yeah. really <laughs> all that for we never really finished borderlands one properly on our own because we had help mm -hmm. from someone that was completely overpowered and so kind of <laughs> so when i was playing with you tonight alex i was sitting going i was feeling guilty going i'm i'm that guy now i'm that guy <laughs> just jumping into someone else's game and ruining it on them <laughs> we have come trust full me, circle trust me yeah. it's, it's not that bad like I need to give a shout out to to an old friend of mine. His name is Nicholas, and I played Borderlands two with him, like all the way through. And he's a really cool guy and everything, but he had one really bad thing that he always does when we play games, especially in Borderlands. He joins the game and then just runs forward, and I just mm -hmm. like see him from 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 behind. He's like, like like about thousand meters away, and I'm like, hey, can you slow down? Can you leave me some loot? And he's like, yeah, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and then just goes ahead again, and I'm just like. Walking through the game. Are there any enemies? No? Okay. Oh, you forgot some loot here. Okay, cool. Oh, you killed the boss. I'm not even there yet. Cool, You're just cool, pick, cool. picking up the scraps <laughs> along the way. Like Yeah, God. like like that adventure oh. time meme where 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 like the the guy with the sword runs through the through the room, kills all the enemies, and then just like one person behind him picking up all the loot. <laughs> I think I think that's, that's the genius. <laughs> that's the genius of um games like Left for Dead. Whereas if someone mm. thinks, I always refer to them as Billy Big Balls whenever they do that. You know, they run off on their own and they think they can cope. On cool. What own, did you call them? Billy, Billy Big Balls? Billy Big Balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Billy Big Balls is about to rush the other team on his own. Good luck. <laughs> That's a great. There were, uh, you know, outside of the enemies too. Gosh, what did you guys think about the vehicles in this game? Because that's always uh, not a hot topic, but it's just kind of like a weird, clunky. It's almost up there with Mass Effect for me for video or um, for vehicles. Oh, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, they're not, not grenades, that bad, but, no. <laughs> but they're, not, they're not a vehicle, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the thing they, they they serve the purpose. Uh, the game would have sucked without it because you would have been having to cover so much ground without them. I didn't like that. They've got to me. They've got what I would call warthog controls. You yeah. kind of you kind of point the camera where you want it to go and push forward, and it kind of just slides towards wherever the camera's uh, pointing. Uh, they're not great, but they they they're fine. They they they, they serve a purpose. Um, the good old yeah, what, bandit runner, and you know, <laughs> just, yeah, well, what just I always said, things. what I always said about the the uh, vehicles in this game, they are there. Yeah, that's, <laughs> the that's a point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any other um, any other elements of this game to you that were just super satisfying? Because this game for me just hit a lot of like I don't even know what to call it dopamine receptors. Where mm -hmm. you know if this happened in the game in this order and was executed this way, my brain would just like we were saying earlier would light up like a fucking Las Vegas jackpot. One thing for me um, was anytime I had a shotgun and could use it as a throwable um, and get that final <laughs> kill with it, that was the most satisfying goddamn thing i could ever do in a video game and yeah. Yeah. that to me just hits those receptors at home i think like, those were the torque weapons that you just like instead of reloading just throw the weapons at the enemy they explode yep. and then whoop new go gun just shows up like a second afterwards incredible <laughs> I, I would love to be there in the room whenever you know the designer or the developer came up with that idea you know it's kind of like i, I imagine i have this idea of you know the boss coming into the room and going um Right, we're assigning out tasks today and you're doing the animation for reload. I'll come back in two days and see what you've got. And he comes back to the desk and the guy's like, okay, so when he's done with the gun, he just throws it away. And a new one appears. It's like, that's that's not the animation. Yeah, that's what we're going with. You know, it just, it's such a it wacky be idea. It, it on would, the animation now. It would only work in Borderlands. You know, if you've seen that in yeah. Halo or Half-Life, you'd be sitting going, what is going on there? It's I love that. I love that as well. I think there was an achievement for it as well for getting kills with 
with a mm. gun that you'd, you'd thrown away. There was, yep. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think uh, talking about guns in general, this is this is like the thing where this game shines. Um, it it kind of became like a little bit of an addiction for me, just like collecting guns. Like when I pick up new guns, like comparing this to the guns that I already have, is this better? Okay, switching out guns and like play for for like thirty minutes again. Okay, I got new guns. Let's compare them again. And like there are games like Diablo where this lets up like at a certain point, but I don't. I don't recall this letting up at all in, in Borderlands. Mm -hmm. So it's like all the time from start to end, you're just like acquiring new guns, like switching them out, like trying everything out. And there are so many weird and funny and strange combinations. Uh, wasn't there this one gun that's just laughing when you're, when you're shooting. So every uh, time you're I, shooting, it's just like, ha <laughs> No, <I'm, laughs> there, there might be one that laughs, but there's a gun in it called Bean. And the whole yeah. idea is that there's a soul trapped in the gun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's gone insane. And he screams. <laughs> he literally screams whenever you play, you know, shoot the gun. And it's a really, really good gun, but the scream's really annoying. So it's like, do I want this super powered yeah. weapon? Or do I want a gun that just makes normal noises because this is driving me mental? <laughs> and it's literally like, ah! <laughs> That's and I think nice. I think CD Projekt Red they uh, used one of those guns in Cyberpunk. Actually, there's right. one gun. Yeah, there's one gun in Cyberpunk. Uh, it's, it's hidden somewhere, and it always sings when you're firing this gun. It always sings uh, Rihanna songs. Oh God! <laughs> Hope I don't find that. I don't know what's um, worse, Rihanna songs or screams. <laughs> yeah. But what a game! What a game! Anything else, gentlemen, for Borderlands Two? We haven't chatted about. I, I guess you touched on this, Alex. My fault for rewinding mm. here, but. Um, you know, when you were talking about going back and you're in the inventory system and you're looking back, seeing like, hey, is this gun comparable? Is it an upgrade? Is it a downgrade? Um, what elements do I want? The menu and the inventory system on here was really fucking good. Um, Absolutely. Like, it was on par enough. In some games, you know, it, it's such a, um, a mediocre thing to look at an inventory or a menu system. But man, in this one, it made such a difference. Um, when you're trying to go through and, you know, oversee so many stats at the same time with every single gun, whether it's a reload speed, um, you know, throwable distance, whatever. I mean, fire rate, mm. all that fun stuff was important. And they laid it out in a way where it made sense. And it was easy to pick a new gun on the fly. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. And I do think like inventory systems can really cock up a game, especially games that were like designed for PC, i.e. a mouse and a keyboard. And then yes. you move them over to a controller and it is just, it's a mess and it doesn't work. Um, Borderlands, Borderlands was great. Worked so well. Easy to swap in and yeah. out your weapons. The, the way you could lock your four favorite weapons onto the D-pad to quickly swap between them. Lifesaver, you know, compared to having yeah. to, you know, I used to hit Y. Y would like sort of scroll through your weapons in order. Uh, whereas if you hit that D-pad, it just went, snapped straight to them. Way, way yeah. better. Uh, you're, you're talking about features that made the game good. One of my favorite features in the game is um, Second Wind, which is essentially oh, whenever, yeah. whenever you, we, a lot of games like this, if you die, your partner has to help you up. And that's kind of it, end of story. And you can do that in Borderlands too. But another way of getting up is just by getting a kill. So when you're down, your motion's locked in. You can't use grenades unless you have a specific perk to use grenades while in Second Wind. Um, and I don't think you can zoom in with your weapon as well. You can't like yeah. aim down sights. So it makes it a wee bit tougher to get a kill. But if you get that kill, uh, you're back up again. You're on your feet. Uh, and I think every time you get second win, like say you're on a boss fight and you get second win the second time, it might have been 15 seconds first time. The next time it will only be 12. And it'll kind of get shorter and shorter to make it tougher and tougher. But it's a lifesaver on any boss that has lots of small enemies about because you can kind of intentionally leave those guys about. So if the boss takes you down, that's fine. There's a loader just to your left. Take him out. You're back up again in the fight. <laughs> it's great. It's really, yeah. really satisfying. It really is. Yeah, yeah look, since, since we're talking about features that uh, came with this game, um, what I also just remember right now, usually when like an like an RPG shooter comes out and there's like a follow-up, they tone down the RPG elements. I felt with Borderlands 2, they actually did the opposite. Of course, there are skill trees, like just in the first game, you have like several skill trees with every character, but uh, there are also these badass levels. Uh, like if you complete certain tasks in the game, you get like a badass level and some tokens that you can spend on like very specific uh, statistics. Like uh, you are 
more precise when you shoot. You can jump higher. You can run faster. And they're like, uh, again, a jazillion of this. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you, 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 you can spend them like, like, like for for whatever. This this well, is a cool thing that I like to see more yeah, in games. Actually, I, I I love the badass rank. Um, there was loads of way to level it up. Like even, um, just opening chests and opening cupboards would lead towards challenges of you know say open five thousand chests. Uh, and you would get badass rank points for that. One of the things I really liked about badass rank is that it carried over into Borderlands, mm -hmm. the pre-sequel. So I went in the Borderlands pre-sequel was like 10% buffs on basically everything. I was just like, oh, this is great. And I couldn't <laughs> wait. I was actually really, really excited to play Borderlands 3 because I thought, you know, right, my badass rank is like through the roof because I played Borderlands 2 on the 360, then I played it on the Xbox One, then I played uh, the pre-sequel. Uh, so mm -hmm. I am going to begin in the Borderlands 3, like already overpowered, and they done away with it and they replaced it with something ah. different. And it was just like boo <laughs> <laughs> rank back. Now, speaking of the, speaking of that to close things out kind of and, and segue that direction, um, you, you talked a little bit about Borderlands 3. How do you think Borderlands 2 stands out or compares, you know, where does it fit in the franchise in comparison to Borderlands 1? three or the pre-sequel oh i know this there's the order from top to bottom borderlands two borderlands one the pre-sequel and then borderlands three that's that's wow. yeah. in order. i'm identical holy shit <laughs> well i see the i see it a little bit different i think it's borderlands two no doubt about it it's the best game in series yeah then it's actually borderlands three for me then it's oh. the pre-sequel then it's the first one because i feel the first one has like the the, the mechanics are not there yet they are just being mm -hmm. like they feel like they are work in progress compared to the second game. Yeah, uh, yeah. Number two is where it really hit its stride. What were you yeah, saying? Definitely. Uh, the, the pre sequel, I think, is underrated. I know a lot of people that won't even play it because it was developed by a different studio, but it's a lot of fun. I'm pretty sure it's the only Borderlands with a double jump, and then you've got that double jump in spaces the with butt like slam a, with the butt slam, <laughs> um, places with low gravity. Um, with the double slump and you're, you're kind of flying through the air, taking shots, things. Um, the writing's a little bit off on the pre sequel, um, but it's fun getting to play as like Handsome Jack or playing as Claptrap. You know, those are characters I don't think anyone really would have expected to get to play as before. You're basically getting an origin <laughs> story for Handsome Jack, which again makes him even more likable if you play Borderlands 2 after playing the pre sequel. Because you kind of start to understand why he's the person he is. And and again, it's you know, toilet humor type game, but yet there's a little bit of depth to it. There's a little there's character arcs and there's there's depth to the characters. And I think that's that's great. And you don't really get that unless you play that pre-sequel. So if for any reason you've played all the Borderlands games, but you kind of went, nah, I don't think I'll bother with pre-sequel, dig it out. You can get it dirt cheap in the handsome collection. Yeah, all these games are part of the Handsome Collection now. I guess we should mention them. There's also Tales from the Borderlands, mm -hmm. um, you know, taking that old Telltale Games format from, you know, things like The Walking Dead, um, you know, stuff like that. Yep. Well, golly gosh, gentlemen. Anything else here? I think we touched no, on pretty much that. anything. Like, uh, I, I, cover most of I really want to play it now again. Like, even when uh, <laughs> I said it earlier, when, when Wayne and I were playing, uh, I'm on the grind for Assassin's Creed Valhalla right now, and I've reached a point where I'm like, no, that's too much. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm probably just going to ditch uh, Assassin's Creed for now and then just go over to Borderlands because like just this like 30 minutes or 45 minutes or how long I played just uh, pulled me in so much. I need to get back into this. Yeah. <laughs> well, no doubt could, about that. If you could stuck with any bosses, be sure to give me a shot. 100 <laughs> percent let, let the one shot destroyer of worlds return but um fingers crossed ladies and gentlemen for maybe a borderlands 4 in the future or something else just keep the borderlands franchise alive and look out for the movie sometime in 2022 three or four what the fuck ever happens after COVID. <laughs> um so we'll go ahead and wrap it up from here but thank you so much for tuning in today we appreciate it if you like this episode be sure to subscribe leave a review it helps us out a ton and be sure to stay tuned for future episodes in the future as well um again my name was Tony again joined by Wayne Alex thank you both for being here as always um, outside of that be sure to join us next week we don't know what's in the store just yet you don't know either but we promise you're gonna like it and don't forget to save your game <laughs>